Well, good evening. I'm so glad you've uh, tuned in to, to be with us this evening. I say us, right here in my office. This is probably the first time you've been in my office. Well, you're here. Uh, give me an opportunity. I said, let's do it in my office. Give me a good uh, reason to clean up a little bit. So look at this desk. Probably won't see it like this again for a long, long time. But anyway, I'm glad you're here. And this evening, I'm, I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles and look at Psalms 13. Psalms 13. I'm going to turn there. Or I'm going to be reading that in just a moment. So while you're turning there, I just want to say that uh, I've been praying for you. And uh, I look forward, as I said the other day, I look forward to where we can meet again in one room in our church and just have a great celebration and and worship uh, with uh, our friends and and uh, I like I say I'm just praying that that day will be uh, sooner than later uh, so this Sunday uh, we'll be back again uh, for our Sunday services at 830 and I hope that you'll uh, tune in with us there and and then after that 830 service you can watch it anytime I believe on our website uh, this Sunday is Palm Sunday, and uh, my message will be gearing toward that. Easter's right around the corner, just a couple of weeks away. We've got some announcements about Easter, uh, what we're planning to do uh, on that special day, and I hope you'll tune in with us. If not, uh, listening and, and see what Brian has for the announcements, uh, we'll be emailing some announcements. And if you don't get announcements in our uh, in the email, uh, just check in with us or request them, and we'll send them out later in the week. Well, Psalms 13, um, I've entitled this, uh, You Can Trust Him. A, it's broke down into three different sections, and the first section is verses 1 and 2, uh, his condition, the psalmist's condition. Uh, the second section, verses 3 and 4, is his condition causes him to pray. And then the last two verses, verse 5 and 6, the results of his praying. Uh, starting with that very first part, though, we'll, we'll, we'll read the chapter and uh, verse, six verses, that's all. It says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? And then verse 3, he says, uh, or continuing that verse, Having sorrow in my heart daily, how long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted uh, in you or in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. These six verses, kind of a moving six verses from one ex uh, end of the spectrum to the other uh, and he starts out by saying how long he used that phrase how long four different times how long how long how long and he feels like god has forgotten him have you ever felt like you've been forgotten have you felt like you ever felt like you have uh, been left out I remember growing up and while I was in school, we'd pick teams either on, uh, at, on the playground at school or in the neighborhood, and we're going to play a ball game or play basketball or football or something, and okay, let's choose sides, and somebody else would be the captain, and they say, well, I choose Bobby, I choose so and so, I'm Susan, and there I am, I'm the last one. I'm thinking, have they forgotten me? Do they not see me? I'm standing right here. I mean, I can do so much for this team, and I felt like, I was the one left out. I was the one, oh, well, there's only one pick. Let's pick him, you know. I'm wondering if the psalmist isn't feeling like, I've been left out. He's overlooking me. He's not even paying attention to me. Sometimes in the situations that we find ourselves in or the problems we're going through, we kind of feel like God's not listening to us at all because he said, how long will you forget me? And maybe that, you may be hitting that point right now. Some people I talk to on the phone, they tell me they're getting cabin fever. Uh, some people say, you know what, we're working, but yet when I come home, I've got the children to, uh, to uh, try and help through their schoolwork, uh, trying to keep them occupied or entertained. And uh, be honest with you, I'm about to pull my hair out. I don't know what it is at your house, but I... I'm thinking, you know, this is just a new way of living right now that we're having to deal with, and uh, we can do this. And, and matter of fact, the newness is kind of worn off, hasn't it, to where we say, you know what, I, 
I'm ready to get back to my regular routine. It may be a bit, little bit longer. And you maybe feel overwhelmed right now with all the responsibilities that you have. And you may be thinking, well, along with the psalmist, that's me too. And I'm asking this question, how long, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long is this going to go on? Of course, can God really forget us? He can't forget us. The psalmist said over in, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah said this in Isaiah 49, can a mother forget her baby? Absolutely not. And matter of fact, he goes on in that same verse, verse 16 of Isaiah 49. He says, I have written your name on the palm of my hand. God will never forget us. Why, we're his children. Just like a mother could not forget her child, God is not going to forget his children. And the psalmist, though, he's saying, I am so despondent. I am so discouraged. I am so overwhelmed with life. Lord, let me ask you something. How long are you going to forget me? He's not forgotten us. But if we keep this kind of attitude about, is God going to forget? Listen to what he says. How long will you hide your face? Are you, how long will you hide your face from me? Will you continually turn your face away from me? Will you be silent from me forever? And then verse 2, how long shall I take counsel of my soul? Here's what happens. Is that when we feel that God's forgetting us, we start counseling ourselves. Now we're in trouble. We start taking our own advice. In reality, we ought to be turning to the Lord. And that's eventually what the psalmist does. But right now, he finds himself, I am counseling myself because no one else is listening to me, especially God. He goes on and he says, having sorrow in my heart. So he thinks God's forgotten him. And because God's forgotten him, now he's turned that forgetfulness or forgetfulness, thinking God's forgotten him, into sorrow. And that's exactly where it leads to. When you think God's forgotten you, well, all of a sudden, now you're brokenhearted. And it becomes a pity party. I, I, I am sorrowful of heart. I'm brokenhearted. And God's not thinking about me. He's not listening to me. And now I'm just having a pity party. And that's exactly what the psalmist here is, is doing. He's having a pity party. And we're, we're moving into an area in our lives when we think this way of realizing this is spiritual warfare. I've constantly got to be reminded that God loves me, that I'm in a state of spiritual warfare. I need to put on the whole armor of God and I use it. Don't, don't start backing up. St uh, stand up and, and take a step forward. Lean into it and realize the promises of God, and God is watching over you. He cares for you. He loves you. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, before I move on here, though, I'm thinking that if that's where you are, I, I just wanted to give you some things to consider. One is this, that we are in spiritual warfare. We're in spiritual warfare when something like uh, uh, COVID-19 isn't taking place. We're still in a spiritual warfare every day of our lives. But during this time especially, be careful. I say be careful on um, judging others, especially spiritual judgment. You know, say, well, these people should act this way or that way. Be careful on judging others, especially about their spiritual activities. I also say be careful in judging others, uh, just how they're living, uh, not just spiritually, but also judging others how on um, decisions that they make. And that tells me, too, I I need to be careful on some of the decisions I need uh, that I'm making. You need to make decisions, make them. But otherwise, uh, just say, you know what, we're holding on here, not holding on. We're looking up to God. We're, 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 we're trusting the Lord to see us through this. And one more thing I want to ask you to, to be careful about and cautious, and that is be careful what you write down, uh, especially in our social media uh, outlets. Uh, because what you write... It may be from emotions, because I'm thinking the psalmist here, he's writing this through his emotions, what he's experiencing right now. And he says, how long, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me? And then after he writes this psalm, later on, he's probably looking back and said, I should, have, I should never have mistrusted God. He's, I know he's always, but you know, I'm just in a place in my life that I just need to vent. And I feel so much better now that I've vented. But he meant it, and it's written forever in Scripture. 
Well, anyway, he moves on from verse 2 to verse 3. And in verse 3, his condition leads him to prayer. Look what he says. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Hey, what, what does it take or what is it that comes in our life that leads us to pray? Is it uh, discouragement? Disappointment? Is it trouble financially? Is it health concerns? Is it family issues like my marriage or my children? What drives a person to pray really is uh, intriguing to me. And I'm thinking, you know, we are encouraged in the Bible to pray always about all things. And so I think this, I think this, pray first. We ought to be people who pray first. Whenever we see our life taking a turn emotionally or strategically or something going on, pray first. Pray first. And that's exactly where eventually this psalmist turned to. He turned to God and said, God, consider me and hear me. Don't forget me. And he turned to the Lord and cried out to him. And this is exactly what we are encouraged to do as believers and followers in Christ, to pray. Pray first. Last week I, I mentioned a couple of prayer requests, and today I want to mention some too, because I want us to pray for them. I'm going to mention a few names, and these are individuals that we pray for. This is called intercessory prayer, and I want us to continue to pray for James and Andrea Nuvez. They're our missionaries in Thailand. They're back united together. They were separated for a little bit. Uh, James was in Brazil and she was left there in, in Thailand, but they're back together. And I'm so grateful for that and ask God to protect them. For And a couple of other prayer requests that we have. Beth uh, Rosinko, uh, she's having some health, I mean some uh, biopsies done. And just keep her in your prayer. Amy White, uh, she's going through some chemotherapy right now. Glenda uh, Gover, this is Gladys's sister, uh, pray for her, and many more on our prayer list that we could ask prayer for. But I want us to ask God to intervene not only in their lives, but others that we have on our prayer request, on our prayer sheet. But also, how about you? What is the one thing that I asked last week? What is the one thing that you're asking God for in your life? Is there one thing that's just overwhelming you, like this psalmist? He thought God forgot him. God hadn't forgotten him, and God hadn't forgotten you. He's not forgotten me. And um, But maybe maybe emotionally, maybe financially, maybe health needs, maybe some clarity in your mind or discernment. What is the one thing in your life that you would like to ask God for, uh, for yourself and for your family? So I want to pray for you right now, and then I'll come back and we'll finish this, this chapter. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to pray. I thank you too, Lord, that knowing this, that you've never forsaken us, that you'll never forget us. And thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for the opportunity to call out and to cry out to you and I ask you, God, to hear our requests and hear our prayers. I thank you, Lord, for our missionaries. I thank you for James and Andrea and their boys. I ask God that you'd protect them and watch over them. Give them discernment. And Lord, I pray that you'd help them, Lord, to be a great witness for the cause of Christ and for the gospel there in Thailand. I thank you, Lord, for Beth Rosinko, and thank you for Amy and for their faith, and ask God that you'd watch over them during these health issues that they're experiencing now. God, I pray that you would raise them up, encourage them today. For Glenda Gover, and uh, that you would watch over her and bless her and touch her body. God, I pray for our church family, asking God that you would uh, touch our lives, our families, and provide our needs. Lord, I pray that you would be an encouragement to them right now during this time. Give them wisdom. Help those moms and dads who are helping their children uh, through the schoolwork off the computer that may be something they've never experienced before. God, I pray you'd watch over them. Lord, I pray for our uh, families that may be uh, struggling right now financially or with a job on furlough, whatever it may be, Lord, I pray that you would uh, just, uh, um, that we're just interceding on their behalf, God, asking that you would provide their needs and help them during this time. 
And then, Lord, for each one of us that has one thing on our heart and mind, asking God that you would hear us about this one request that we have, Lord, that your will be done. But, Lord, hear us, hear our cry, hear our calling out to you about this one thing. It may be something personal in our own hearts. It may be one person that we're praying for. Whatever it is, Lord, would you hear us? And would you respond to our request? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to finish up by saying this on, in, in verse 5. Uh, verse 5 is a, a noticeable change. Look at the change that takes place from verse 1 to verse 5. Look what he says. He says, But I have trusted in you in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice. What happened in verse 1 to verse 5? Reality is nothing really changed. I mean, this was something that's going on, but uh, it doesn't tell us that there has been any, any significant change except this one thing, attitude. Attitude has changed. It is my attitude has changed since I took this to the Lord in prayer. My whole uh, perspective or perspective has changed. His attitude, his perspective has changed. And it happened because he prayed. You know what? I believe it's going to be amazing, will be amazing, is amazing. The attitude change that takes place in each of our hearts and lives when we go to God first. Go to God first. Sometimes we try to work it out ourselves. Sometimes we try to ignore it. Sometimes we think, well, you know what? Maybe if I keep myself busy enough, I won't think about my problems. Here's the thing. Your problems are still going to be there. How are you dealing with them? I think this. Pray first. And as you pray first, I believe what happened to the psalmist will happen to you and me, happens to me, and will happen to you too, and that is pray first. Cast all your care upon the Lord because He cares for you. And you know what? Here's what happens. There's an attitude change. It reminds me of, of uh, Philippians chapter uh, 4 where Paul, Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Because he says this. Look what he says in verse uh, 5. He says, My heart shall rejoice. I've made a decision. I'm going to rejoice. The problems are still there. But I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm trusting in Him. To direct my path, I'm trusting in Him. I'm trusting in Him. And I choose to rejoice. I'm not going to rejoice because of my problems or for my problems, but I'm going to rejoice during my problems. While I'm walking through this, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And he goes on and tells us why he's rejoicing. He goes, but he says, along with rejoicing, I will sing to the Lord. That's rejoicing, right? It's hard to sing a happy song when you're down in the dumps, to be honest with you, you know? But he says, I'm going, to I'm going to be singing because I'm rejoicing. I think it goes hand in hand. I'm singing, and depends on what kind of song I'm singing, you're probably going to tell what my mood is. But I'm singing a song of rejoicing in the Lord. And here's the reason, verse 6. I will sing to the Lord because He has dealt bountifully with me. In other words, I'm singing, I'm rejoicing because the Lord has blessed me. You think about it. The Lord has blessed me. The Lord has blessed you. He's blessed you in providing salvation. He's blessed you in giving you a relationship with the Father. He has blessed you with the promises of His Word. He has blessed you. You go to the Lord. You take your problems, your issues, your things that you're dealing with in life. Take it to God. Pray first. And you come back from your time of prayer, your time alone with God, and you'll see, I have so much to be thankful for. It's an attitude changer. And sometimes we need that. But let me tell you this. God loves you with an everlasting love. And He's never forgotten you. He's not overlooking you. He hears you. You say, well, how come he's taking so long? I wonder if that's not what Abraham uh, was thinking when God says, I'm going to bless you with a child, and I'm going to, hey, you're going to be the father of a great nation. 25 years later, <laughs> 25 years later, I don't think we're going to be waiting 25 years later to get through this. But don't you think Abraham says, Lord, why are you taking so long? Listen, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 says, 
The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness. He's not slack. And he's not going to be late in responding to our calling out to him. So listen, let's be faithful and following hard after him. And one more thing before I leave is this. I read the first 13 chapters of Psalms today, and, and I got the verse thir chapter 13, and, and chapter 13 is a great. I encourage you to go back to the beginning of chapter 1, 2, 3, right through, and just see how God responds and how God's working in the psalmist's heart and life. It's a great encouragement. And after you get to chapter 13, you'll get up and say, man, isn't God good? And yes, he is. He is good. Now, um, I, I'm going to encourage you to do this now. Read, read your Bible. Read God's Word. Glance at the news every once in a while. Get back to reading God's Word. Get on your knees and pray and calling out to Him. Reach out and help someone. Call someone. Uh, check on your neighbors and your family. Love your family. And uh, I hope to see you soon at church. God bless you. Father, once again, I ask that you bless the reading of your word. Encourage us. And Lord, watch over us. Lord, let us be, I pray that we'd be sensitive to your leading in our lives, that we'd be able to help someone near us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.